that um, we got a word that is pacha, that means earth, that it's a complex of uh, not only earth, but it's a space and the space is like rounded in a very intuitive way. But pacha also means a cycle or a period of time that is also circular. And so uh, in a very intuitive way, again, the Incas knew this concept of space-time that later uh, Mr. Einstein told us that are part of the same thing. So it's amazing how a word in an ancient language <laughs> can tell you so much about their perception of the universe. Yeah, next one, please. Well, the values that uh, we got are going to be according to the environment that we got. So hard work, that is uh, yankai, yachai, that is the acknowledgement. And uh, without the last one, uh, we are not going to survive. That is the munai. The munai is the connection, the kind connection between living beings that could be also expressed in the love, in the word of love that explains how they survived also the hard environment. Next one, please. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I think I missed one slide that was supposed to be at the end, but well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Peruvian, this is the Peruvian geography. Why is our environment so hard? We got a combination of many geographical factors that are very different, but we all got them together in a place that is not that big. One thing is, of course, the oceans, yes. Um, and in front of our coast, we don't get one by two currents of the ocean with different temperatures. Yeah, From the South Pole, we got the Humboldt current that it's cold, crashing all the time with the north, um, north of Peru, <laughs> a sea current, warm current, call it El Niño. So it's if you can imagine that we got El Niño in our north coast, we already are in trouble. The crashing of these two Koreans is affecting our weather the whole time. Yeah, this is one of the things that we get to deal with. Next one, please. Other thing is that because we are in the in this area of the Andes, we got so many different altitudes that also gave uh, us a very unique geography yeah this author it has two four six eight different altitudes but um uh yeah yeah other authors we are going to use more so our geography is giving us different <laughs> uh, microclimates let's say yeah next one please have a couple missed Mm, well, I have a couple of slides uh, uh, lost. Uh, something will happen. Yeah. The fact that we are also above the ring of fire and the fact that we are close to the equator between two tropics, giving us uh, the location in a tropical area makes that Peru. Uh, well, if in the world we have 114 microclimates, Peru got 84 of them. Yeah. We have a hot spot in the high Andes of high UV radiation. It's really hot because besides being in the equator, we are high. Uh, the combination of all that factors makes that um, in today's Peruvian territory, only 19% of this is good for agriculture. It's so different from the state that you can make massive farming over there. And because of the fragility of our ecosystems, we can consider ourselves as the second country in the globe affected by global warming. Yeah? If we consider the economical reasons, we are in number 17 in the world. That is still very bad. Next one, please. Okay, so as this was completely messy, you can understand that we needed to have a lot of help for developing calendar. So we did have sun calendars, especially with uh, the solstice and the equinox, moon calendars, which are great because nature is aligned to the moon. We ladies are attached to the moon, so it's great <laughs> to have the moon calendars like from month to month. Besides that, it's quite visual. And even star calendars uh, with the cycles of the appearance of uh, some stars like the brightest stars. Next one, please. 
Okay, what ancient Peruvians did to solve all of this mess? <laughs> a lot of things, because we didn't want to die, so we need to do a lot of things. The agriculture that was developed in the high Andes was very early, not even uh, considered agriculture itself, but horticulture. Uh, that's how we can explain that the oldest civilization is 5,000 years ago, and the uh, early agriculture was developed 8,000 years ago, even in nomad days. In Peru, we got the first channels of irrigation of the world, located in Nazca deserts. Next one, please. Uh, we even challenged some gender roles because here in Peru were found uh, burials of ladies uh, of the nomad times that were also hunters. And we believe is because life was so hard that the teamwork is always better. Yeah, we have to develop tools of agriculture uh, because the first 15 centimeters in the ground uh, are very poor because of the UV radiation. So our tools have to be special. Yeah. Uh, to develop good agriculture. Next one, please. So the managing of water and managing of soil was top. Yeah, they are great pieces of engineering. Check the Andenes area, how they earn uh, more space to farm, even in the in the sites of the high mountains. Yeah, this is Andenes are also amazing and pieces of great engineering, so they can keep them nutrients in every single stair. So one uh, question that we get a lot is why the Incas uh, did not survive a long time. What we know as Inca, 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 it's only a period of time that actually counts as 95 years. And it's hard to understand how one of the greatest ancient civilizations of the ancient world developed in less than a century. So the answer is no, no, it's not aliens. Is that the Incas are like the last chapter of a much, 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 much longer novel uh, developed in Peru. Hundreds of civilizations developed in this territory that is uh, that was the Tawantin Suyo, that is today not only Peru, but six other countries, yeah? The civilizations raise and fall, raise and fall. They lasted some hundreds of years, sometimes le uh, lots less. And it's because we always got to deal with huge climate crisis, mainly because of El Niño phenomenon. Five years without rain, six years without rains, and they cannot survive. The civilizations disappear. The, uh, um, the technology, the science, the techniques that they achieve, somehow they survive in the time. The Incas, what they did was a very interesting political project of welcoming everybody in a huge confederation. That's the only way that we can explain that they develop it so fast in such a short period of time yeah next one please yeah this is the territory that is the incas country the tawantin suyo that as you can see of course is peru but also is including part of colombia ecuador bolivia chile and argentina yes we are struggling with the crisis still but it was something that we did since ancient days Next one, please. The key of how we achieved to make finally civilizations that lasted more because uh, was because we could develop it wonderful technology for preservation of food. When we de develop this, civilizations start growing for long, longer or longer time, right? Uh, when the Incas received this technology that you're seeing uh, as a picture as somehow some houses is actually very well designed barns yeah to keep the food for the times of need yeah when the incas received this it was already 100 years old but when they could achieve to have them they could survive the years 
with all the problems that we got, the Niño phenomena, the earthquakes, because we are in the, the ring of fire area, uh, the diseases that we can have, the wars that we can have, everything uh, because we got food in a stock, yeah? And that's why we can still, uh, we can start seeing how important and like main use uh, of the astronomy was that was developing especially agricultural calendars yeah this is the main use of the astronomy of the incas interpreting the very complex environment we got to make good agriculture because if not, we die. If we don't make agriculture, we die. It's it's as basic as that. <laughs> we need really need to have that in the top of the list. Yeah, making food to eat. Next one, please. The food was not only a storage in these colcas, in these places, but also have to be first dehydrated. How we dehydrated? Well, using salt, using lime, using some herbs but especially using our super high UV radiation that we got in the Andes. Even in winter, when we got here June, all the days are so super sunny. Yes, it's not cloudy, it's sunny, but at night could be super cold because we are close to the equator. So we have a tropical um, environment in the days, it's super tropical, a sunny tropical day, but at night could be very cold because in Cusco, for example, we are still 11,000 years old. Some of the products that were dehydrated are the potatoes that are still dehydrated in our days, the corn, and for sure the meat. And the proof of this is that the word in English for, the, for dry meat is uh, jerky that comes from the original Quechua word charqui. Um, that, that proves that we developed that technology around here in the high Andes, yeah? And after the dehydration of this food, they were stored at the colcas, and that's how the people could survive. A well-dehydrated potato can last between 18 to 35 years, um, according to, to, to the experts today. But even in the chronics of the Spaniards, they say that even uh, 200 years after they arrived, they still look at for the colcas, looking for this food for because this one was the change for navigation through continents. Yeah, having this food and they didn't need anymore to take the Galapagos tortoise with them <laughs> to feed uh, <laughs> the people with the poor tortoise. Yeah, this was a great option. So again, this is what I wanted to get at the end. the main use of the. Inca and astronomy was for developing agricultural calendar. So the astronomer uh, was always somebody very special in the Inca's court. Yeah, but uh, the deep knowledge, of course, was managed by the Incas and the royalty, the, the most important people. But people day by day, the, the peasants, yes, uh, use a lot of astronomy still for understanding the, uh, the the time in calendars are in clocks, yeah, to, to, to be aware of the time of the day, of the time of the season, and in the years, yeah. Next one, please. Yeah. The proof that we in Peru have a, a ancient tradition of astronomers is that actually in my country is the ancient astronomical observatory in the whole continent, yeah. Uh, this is amazing because it's in the coast of Peru and that's how a tropical desert looks. It's quite dry. And uh, we got the temples in the first picture and the observatory in the second. It's called the Back of a Dragon too, or it was called. It's a mystery who built it. The civilization that built it is the only remain they left and they disappear. Yeah. We got 13 towers and in the uh, borders of them uh, is located the sun from an observatory point in the um, solstice and around the middle is the both equinox check. But because we got so markers in between, a visible change in the position of the sun could be seen every two or top three days. 
So it's absolutely amazing. And it's coming from 2,300 years ago. It's unbelievable. Next one, please. But we also got in Peru, the ancient city in the whole continent, in America. It's called Caral. Uh, it's a mystery still because it is pre-ceramic. Uh, how a city pre-ceramic, I mean, when the people couldn't still get the blocks, <laughs> the adobes inside of a fire to make them more resistant. They didn't find out yet, but this, the city survived. 5,000 years later. And it's probably the last inhabitants buried at the city. And uh, after that, the legend was so big that nobody else could uh, build above that area because it was considered sacred. This is an amazing place. I visited in the middle. It's in the middle of the desert, two kilometers away from the shore of the ocean. It was devoted to the fire at one ancient god called Supai. Next one, please. And even it was discovered in like uh, more than 20 something years, 22 years. Last year, where made the studies when the alignments of Caral uh, are visible with the sun, a lot with the moon, and with the brightest stars. The main buildings are uh, aligned to the uh, stellar objects. All of that I want to tell you about the agriculture, it's because. The Incan astronomy was the main tool to give the word a true Inca treasure. That is the food that everybody is enjoying today. Yes, in Peru and Bolivia, where they developed the potatoes that today feed the world. Peru, at, at the same time in Mexico, the corn, the quinoa that the world go crazy for some years ago but so many other wonderful products for feeding the people. And all of this living treasure was grown under the light of the stars, yeah? So that's why it's so meaningful. The understanding of Earth reflected in the skies to develop the agriculture that today is holding the world. This number is true. I took it from the American Indian Smithsonian Museum. 60% of the seeds that are feeding the world are Native American. I mean, the whole continent, but Peru make the biggest part with Bolivia, just saying, yeah, <laughs> with the potato, especially and the quinoa. Yeah, you have no idea of how many other great products we can. So after this presentation about the agriculture and why they reflected the cycles of Earth in the sky and in the sky of Earth, let's check a little bit more about them, uh, how they understood the word. And then Cosmovision, next one, please. Because um, the first slide was a little bit about that, yeah? Uh, also, in a hard environment, new values of being uh, more working as a community uh, are needed. Not so individually, but we have to think as a community because otherwise we are not going to survive. We need to make this synergy between all of the, all of us, yeah? The works were, the, were separated in three, the Kai Pacha, when we live, the Hanach Pacha, where the visible gods are, yeah? And the Uku Pacha, that is the inner work or the underground, that it's a sacred place because Pachamama or Mother Earth lives there represented by the snake when we live is represented by a puma and the hanach pacha the spiritual war is represented by the cold next one please so the religion is also more complicated that you can believe yes in this level are we the runas the visible gods are above our heads like the sun the moon the stars also below ourselves, the Pachamama, and the sacred mountains, the Apus. Above these visible gods, it is a belief that it's something else, yeah? It's a force, a light that build the universe. And it's like this cosmic soup that had inside the life. It's super complicated to translate. And it's Apukuni Yatik Sevira Kocha Pachayatachi. Yeah. 
That is, is the concept, yeah? But above all, it's a big mystery. It's something that we cannot get to understand because our human minds are just too small. And when I heard about it, give me a lot of peace because it's like life, right? There's something that sometimes we are not going to understand how they work, but they work. So uh, this is the very complex <laughs> uh, way of the Incas perceive the whole universe. Next one, please. Oh, this one was, we can jump this. Okay, this is a theme that I love, is the dark constellations of the Incas. The milk, uh, first, we are located in the Southern Hemisphere, Cusco, the ancient capital of the Incas is only 13 degrees south from the equator. What I have to say about the south is that we do get an a spectacular view of the Milky Way. Yeah, it's precious. We can see the center of the galaxy. Also, the people that live in the equator have a wonderful view of the sky because we see, for example, all the south and a great portion to the north. And uh, we can see the top is Cassiopeia for us in Cusco for example yeah but the milky way is a spectacular how is visible here in these dark areas of the milky way that are better seen in the south the inca saw some animals yes a community interacting between them and the milky way was seen as a great river in the sky call it the hatun mayu the greatest river the dark areas were known as Yanapuyu or the black clouds, yeah? And so we are going to see some of them. In this area, yes, that actually it's close to the Southern Cross and the pointers with Alpha and Beta Centauro, we got the main character. Next one, please. Yep. Oh, first, I forget that I put this. <laughs> um, even I would love to say that Incas were the only ones that make this. We find other cultures that also got somehow some shapes in the sky. Uh, but all of them, all of them are from the southern hemisphere. Yeah. These dark areas are not empty places. There are places with a lot of dust, interstellar gas, a lot of carbon and they don't let the light from the other side of the galaxy get to us. That's why they are obscure. Yeah. Next one, please. Yeah. Other civilizations, they are smaller, that found the, the dark constellations. Aboriginal Sal Torres Strait Islanders in Australia, when they see a huge emu in the whole Milky Way with the Incas, uh, Mokobi, uh, Mokoid in um, Argentina, that they saw also a big bird with a uh, long neck. In a week, see? The Mayas saw in some dark areas uh, a tree of Algarrobo. The Bugis of Indonesia, also the Sulu, Socha, Sodo, and Tswana in uh, Southern Africa also saw. Um, some characters that were walking around the Milky Way and the Polynesia in, in the Pacific also. Uh, a lot um, of the area called the, today the dark nebula of the Colsac, that is the uh, one that is next to the Southern Cross. Yeah? Polynesia and Indonesia, so oh, only this part of the Colsac. Next one, please. And so we go. This is what I wanted to get. Yeah. This is the big black llama. And for me, that I'm showing this for 16 years, for me now it's quite <laughs> clear to see. The eye that it's Alpha Centauri is the eye. Many of the dark constellations of the Incas are um, mixing stars uh, with the dark areas. This, in this case, is the eye, the Gaumanyawin, the eye of the llama. The head is visible, the couple of ears are visible. Uh, the back uh, and the legs of the black llama. I have to tell you that the llamas, alpacas, vicuñas, guanacos are, uh, and especially in ancient days, were very, very beloved animals. Yeah, 
The tradition tell us that they are not a gift that we get from the gods, but they are something that the gods just borrow us. And that makes a huge change, yeah? Because if they are something that we only got as something borrowed, we have to take care of them, respect them. You as a shepherd, you cannot kick a llama. <laughs> if the llama don't want to walk, you have to stay close to her, give kisses and hugs and say, why do you want to work? <laughs> and things like that. And that is an amazing book um, uh, uh, about uh, pastores y llameros. Uh, uh, it's very popular in Cusco. Even was wrote like 50 years ago. Um, and yeah, that's why they are so super important. Also, because the legend said when the last alpaca is gone, the gods are going to be so upset with us that are going to erase humans from Earth. Yeah, they will be so upset. So be kind with the llamas, just saying, just in case. Yeah, And the, the llamas are part of the family. They have to have names and they have to be very well uh, loved <laughs> you have to take lots of care with the llamas alpacas picuñas and guanacos are savages but especially with llamas and alpacas next one please so if in your house you have a, a llama as a family member it's even better if it's a female because it will have lots of babies and this is the case of the mama llama because she got the uño llama the baby llama just below her yeah and it's a newborn. The mama is taking very good care of her because she's muy chiquita, see? And also because very close to the baby, we got a menace. That is, next one, please. <laughs> oh, yeah, the fox, yeah? The fox, the naughty, naughty fox, yeah? Oh, I hope that I can show you this, but this in this area, um, it's the Scorpio constellation, yeah? It's located in Scorpio constellations. And the stinger of the Scorpio is actually the two eyes of the uh, fox, yeah? Actually, it's the Atoch. The Atoch, it's very clever. Uh, he's present in every single tale in oral tradition in the end. Sometimes he's so smart, sometimes he's kind of stupid, but he always learns a lesson at the end. So we believe the fox is their representation of us humans in the stories, yeah? And so that's why he's also in the sky. He's looking for his chance to hunt the baby llama. So if we got a llama, if we got a menace, we need a hero in this story. Next one, please. And he's the shepherd, yeah? Um, in the Andes, the shepherds could be adults, kids, female, male, but it's most likely that the shepherd is a girl. Yeah, for me, it makes sense. Runs like a girl, she's brave like a girl, <laughs> and she fights like a girl. Yeah, this um, shepherd, um, we have like a, a, a thin um, line going up from the head of the shepherd that is a slingshot. The slingshot is going. Uh, to a red star that is actually Antares from Scorpio. So again, the dark constellations are giving us excellent reference for a better understanding of the Milky Way even today. We totally believe the dark constellations should be included in the official nomenclature uh, because the Milky Way is so big and it got only one name, it would be great to have areas of them <laughs> for a better study. So this girl, is running the arms are kind of visible there and the slingshot with the red stone so she can protect the llamas yeah and watching from the other side everything from the highs very wisely next one please uh the and the condor we even can see the uh, the white scarf on the condor right here and we have the open wings of this magnificent uh, bird that is the biggest flying bird on earth it's amazing um it's a scavenger but it's not for the wrong reasons it's because it's so spiritual the condor that is also representative of the spiritual world 
that only eats the leftovers from other animals. Yeah, that is spiritual. It's almost a monk. Yeah, he's in the way to becoming a sacred animal uh, and a god in one moment. Yeah. So at the other side of the Milky Way, we got at least three more. Yeah. This is the only dark area with an official name in astronomy. Today is called the dark nebula. Um, the dark nebula of the cold sack, yeah? And it's just behind the, the Southern Cross, yeah? We have uh, the other side, the pointers of the Southern Cross, Alpha and Beta Centauri, we got the Southern Cross, and in this side, we got the dark nebula of the cold sack. For us, was not, uh, no, <laughs> no cold sack, but a bird, yeah? This bird is the youth. It's such a quiet bird. Let me tell you that is um, it is it was considered like a not so smart bird. It, the feathers are not so bright or beautiful. The best thing that I do to can do is hide and camouflage. You can see why. But it's very well respected because of one story of what legend about the Yutu. And it says that in the early days. It was uh, not a float, but a huge fire that was almost destroying Earth. And it was the Yutu that saved the colors of the rainbow, putting all the colors in there in, in the X of the Yutu. Because the Yutu is almost gray, but the colors of their, uh, of their X are very bright. Yeah. And that's why it got it. So just with that legend, the people respect more the Yutu because. Not a great singer, not great feathers, not a great flyer, but he saved in ancient days our rainbow, and it's because of him that we got him. We got the rainbow. Yeah. Okay. Next to the the uh, the um, YouTube, we got the toad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The YouTube is taking a look to the neighbor, also trying to hunt him. <laughs> The toads are very beloved animals in the animals uh, in the Andes. Um, they are supposed to be predicted children of Pachamama because they live a lot of the year in the, in the, the coming of Pachamama. Yeah, they are in underground. Yeah, uh, when they rise, uh, it's around November and they start singing, and that's how uh, they take the rain. Uh, to Pachamama and the rainy season in the high Andes start when there's the frogs, the toes start sinking. Yeah. I also found a very nice uh, legend about the toads, and it's because they have that shape. Because when a field of potatoes is menaced by a plague, it's Pachamama that turns the biggest potatoes into toads. So they eat the insects and protect the siblings. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why they have that shape. Yeah, so 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 nice. It's a symbol of fertility, a symbol of self transformation and eternity. Also, wonderful animals. Yeah, next one, please. <laughs> We're almost done. Yeah, and hide it here is a, a shy water snake. There's not, uh, not a lot of mythology, but we know that the sacred snakes, the Amarus, are the ones from the jungle and the Amazonian area. Yeah, like the anacondas. Yeah those big uh, snakes. These snakes that are in the Andes, in the high Andes, are small from the water, completely harmless. But we know that one, this one in the sky is the leader of all the snakes. It's all the mythology that we find about it. Next one, please. And so the story of the big black llama that was also called Yakana, or Yama Kamach, the leader of the Lama, also Khatachilla, says that, well, very, very, very late at night when nobody's out to see her, the Black Lama will come to Earth. And she's so thirsty that she's going to drink the water from rivers, lakes, and oceans because she's so thirsty. Then uh, she's back to the skies for a while. She walks around, and at one point, uh, she's not visible anymore in the sky. But the, uh, all, uh, uh, the elders said that we don't have to worry because the llama is going to be back around November 
to give us all the water she got as rain. Yeah, so <laughs> it's the idea of the, the two seasons that we actually got in the tropical Andes, high Andes, because we don't have the four seasons that you, you got in Mediterranean areas. Yeah, with the summer, winter, very hot summers, very wind, uh, cold winters and springs with flowers and falls with leaves, no? For us, it's rainy season and dry season, and that's pretty much the whole change that we got in, in about the weather, yeah? And this was explained by the position of a cosmic llama in the sky. So, uh, next one, please. Yeah, this is what it's explaining. This is how the rainy season looks, and this is how the uh, dry season is looking in the Andes. Yeah, we have few changes anyway these years. Yeah, and well, I want to finish my presentation with this Quechua word that it's añay uh, from my ancients in Quechua. That means thank you. Thank you very much for taking me in your amazing club. You have amazing activities. You have lots of fun. <laughs> and uh, keep the good work. Uh, I'm sure you're doing a better world with all of these activities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Trey. So that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> our thanks go to you. Stefano, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Our, our right. thanks go to you and, and Stefano both because, I mean, you brought in a whole new flavor of, of how to link astronomy with uh, different things. We're used to dealing with software and hardware, right? And that's what we think of. So now we get, our, now we get religion, we get culture, we get food, we get all kinds of cool things. So um, I especially liked how you kind of tied in some of the things we can see here, like Antares and the Scorpio and the and kind of linked to the fox that you talked about. That's about all we can see here is what those southern uh, those southern constellations. Um, so that was cool. I really appreciate it. Um, can you give us like a minute of your planetarium? I wanted to I wanted folks to understand how you kind of kick started this on your own, kind of in the middle of Cusco there and. So I'd be, love to have you give us a minute on that. Sure, sure. Um, well, um, one of our uncles is so into astronomy. He's a teacher in an elementary school. In, and in one family gather, uh, we were closer and he was talking, of, you know, when we get into this, we cannot <laughs> talk about anything else, yeah? And he was talking and my son, that today is 24, those days was four or, or five uh, he was fascinated about uncle erwin and he said why don't you come home i take the telescope over to the park and we see some things and say, of course we love that yeah and when we were doing this like the fourth or fifth time in in that year we said oh we totally have to do this as a living because it's so amazing it's such a wonderful activity and first my dad and my uncle get together because my dad is an entrepreneur in tourism here and he decided to to maybe it's a good idea to start this project yeah but uh cusco because it's a very touristic place it's madly <laughs> expensive <laughs> in rentals yeah? yeah and buy a house is almost impossible here yeah it's a historical city yeah we have colonial incas places and it's very hard to get a house yeah but we could uh, get to a tiny house it's a a pottery man lived there and he left the house and we say it was 10 minutes from downtown. It was in the middle of the forest, covered by trees, so we don't get a lot of light pollution. It's inside a reserved area, and we said, why not? But because we are next to the biggest solar temple in the Incas <laughs> Empire, Sacsayhuaman, woman next to us, we cannot build anything new. Yeah, it was no, no, no way. So we make all the changes inside. So we have to fit a 5.5 meters dome inside a tiny house. And we still needed some room 
Uh, so we elevate a little bit the roof, but we couldn't make that anymore. So we start carving it to the ground. So finally, we could have the 5.5 uh, meters from the dome. Uh, we started, nobody gets what we wanted to do. We said we, we bought an old equipment, the cylinder one with the pinhole technique, yes, uh, for starting. And we uh, said, well, what we don't have in technology, we got in passion and information about the Incas that everybody is so, uh, so interested in getting in Cusco, you know, in the capital, yeah. But we said we have wonderful skies and uh, at the beginning a lot of people tell me you have to choose being on a planetarium about the Incan astronomy or a planetarium about science you cannot have both and we say why <laughs> we can have both yeah because the local people still needs a place to do science we, we don't have a local planetarium this is a family business yeah um Education is not a priority around here. And we were kind of sad, it's very hard. The taxes that we pay for technology is crazy. Um, we, ha we have the upper rank in taxes for taking a telescope here or a projector. But we say, if we keep complaining about it, we never are going to do it. So let's find out how we do. So the, the answer sometimes having was having secondhand equipment and we have not to pay that hard charge sometimes. Some equi equipments were new. And we started the planetarium first only in Spanish uh, because it's so hard. Uh, I still struggle. Sorry, you can't realize that <laughs> in talking in English. But we start doing this. We practice more for the astronomy in English. And then somebody put us on TripAdvisor and woof, everybody was recommending us over there. And we, we, we were having great great records and then we improve uh, we have more telescopes some years ago we got the digital projector that for us is a huge step that projector is uh, <laughs> thank you <laughs> that projector is uh, supposed to be for inflatable domes yes but we got in our place so, but it's still good it can go to seven meters a dome uh, and we were doing excellent, uh, and then the pandemic came, uh, and we have to close for one year and two months. And we said we cannot disappear. Uh, we start making presentations for two, four people. Then they close us again, not gatherings, not closed spaces. So we make stargazing nights only for locals. I say we cannot disappear. We have to handle this year. And last year was great. And so again, we start coming on, back on track. But we got some social problems at the end of the year. On December, we got a lot of strikes. And tourism is again low. December, January, February, March. No job for us. We were going crazy. <laughs> but we decided, no, we have to go anyway. And so we make some huge changes huge for us with the low resources that we got but we changed to solar energy uh, because we really want people taking care of Pachamama and um, you don't only have to say but you have to show and we are a planetarium powered by the stars today yeah <laughs> and that is amazing that is so cool yeah we changed the the panels that we got for TVs and now we can make this speech for everybody in a TV and have videos. And that for us is a lot. We bought a new software that for us is a lot because it was over $3,000. But now we are working on having the dark uh, uh, constellations and the Incas constellations back in the dome. Not only in a presentation like PowerPoint, no. Now the Incas uh, constellations have to be back in the greatness of the dome, yeah, uh, because they are so great. Uh, and we are working on that. We are almost, almost getting that. We are doing a lot of uh, work also in the media, in the Instagram, Facebook, or even TikTok. <laughs> Don't judge me. 
<laughs> but um, giving more information about the Incas to the local people, to people outside. And um, it's costing a lot because we are still in crisis. Uh, but yeah. we have more people in the team. And uh, come on, it's the best job ever. So <laughs> you have to honor that. It's the best job ever. I can play with a projector and telescope on my laser pointer every night. So <laughs> well, it's something and, and the team loves a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you've uh, like your passion is like a, addictive here. <laughs> I mean, you love what you're doing and um, you've you've endured a lot. I mean, just just to get started, but then to go through strikes, yeah. and to go through COVID and to go through you know, all manner of challenges um, is amazing. So um, I want to see if we have questions for you. I wasn't really yes. cracked online but folks in here um got some in spanish that i'm gonna wait for others <laughs> hola gracias muchas gracias <laughs> yeah let's see uh, let me go to euro do you want to ask your question mr mike oh yeah thank you no I'm, uh, i don't uh but i i do appreciate the you know i appreciate a lot of the presentation like i said in the, in the text and it's really interesting because it's not the kind of let me tell you it's not the kind of thing that you learn even as a south american you know you just don't hear these things right like you you really need help to 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 learn about other cultures in venezuela where i'm from the uh you know you just i'd never heard of anybody talking about you know the astronomical culture of anything of the indigenous populations before uh the arrival of columbus right and so it's fun really really interesting so encourage want to encourage you uh maria uh, you, your english is great and uh and yeah and it's really awesome the you know the level of enthusiasm that you display i really <laughs> really like the presentation Muchísimas gracias. Thank, you, thank you i love it yes um i participate this um the beginning of the year even in medellin and in, in colombia they have a wonderful planetarium an amazing museum of science over there and they didn't hear about cultural astronomy they what you're supposed to, you have a university teaching astronomy right here. But when I <laughs> gave this lecture, more people get interested and say, we have to retrieve the chip chat traditions of the stars. We have to retrieve the muescas. And I say, yeah, yes. <laughs> it's inspired because we have a rich culture. And I'm sure that we all got a lot of things to give to the world still. That's awesome. So a couple of hand raisers in, in the virtual world here. So Mike, uh, Brooke, I'll go to you if you want to. Yeah, thank you. I wonder if you have a um, if you have a web presence for your books and your planetarium. Maybe you could uh, share that with us. Uh, uh, a website? Excuse a website, me. indeed. Yes, planetariumcusco.com. Oh, that's yeah. easy. Thank you. Anya. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, you can text that. I should have put a link somewhere in our in our there it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a it's a great place. Go look at go look at her setup. Uh it's it's really pretty cool. Uh, the environment's awesome. Um so thank you, Mike, for that. Uh, uh Jay Birch. Good evening. I uh, very much appreciate your presentation. I uh, have been through Cusco a number of times, mostly uh, uh, when I was mountaineering a lot. Uh, I would do a lot of mountaineering up in the Cordillera Blanca. And uh, I'd often hike down along the King's Trail to uh, Machu Picchu Ooh. or to Oman. And in fact, uh, one time I met an old man. Uh, he, he, he mostly spoke Quechua, which I spoke none of. He spoke a little Spanish, Spanish which I spoke a little of. And we talked for I don't know several hours, and he told me about the animals in the in the uh, in the Milky Way, and I've wow. always been uh, ever since then I've been fascinated by our lack of any nomenclature or structural description of the the Milky Way exactly. in, in the United States. It's very strange to me, mm. and I, I very much appreciate your presenting presenting this. Uh, it reminds me that I want to I want to learn more about it. <laughs> excellent, excellent. My uncle wrote, wrote a book about the Incan astronomy, uh, and it's on Amazon. I will make some publicity to him. <laughs> um, 
Inca and Astronomy Handbook, Erwin Salazar, you can find that on Amazon. <laughs> Inca and Astronomy. Awesome. Erwin Salazar. I How about anybody here in the room? Any him for years to put that in Amazon, but he finally did. So, yes. <laughs> you can put a link in our chat box if you like, uh, yeah. uh, Anna Maria. If you want to type a link, we'll we'll go look. Anybody in the room here have a question? Uh, yeah, Rob. Um, so, is the Milky Way or these constellations, are these dark constellations, are they tied in some way to the creation story of the Incans or the or the end days of the Incans? Mm, actually, uh, we have, when we, you get mega biodiversity on Earth, that means that you have many cultures isolated for a while and different traditions. I found that there is around 17 different myths of origin about the Incas, but I didn't find any of them uh, in, the, in the constellations of the sky. It's uh, it's more about uh, legends, uh, the typical uh, civilizator hero that came from the side of the ocean that one day appears here and he's the one that teach the people how to make civilization in different versions. Um, the coast area coming from the Titicaca Lake, rising from a mountain here, but uh, from the dark areas of the Milky Way, no. Uh, we got though the origin of the sa of the um, sacred river here that it's called the Wilcamayu, the one that forms the sacred valley, coming uh, from the great river of the sky, the Hatunmayu. Once a year, the winter solstice times aligns to the mountains. Uh, at the area when the uh, river starts forming in the mountains and makes what here we know as the sacred valley that goes all the way to Machu Picchu and that sacred river, it's a projection of the river of the sky. Uh, however, that gives us like life, yeah? But about the Incas culture, no, I didn't listen a lot, but who knows, maybe. One day we are going to find the thing is that as we didn't have anything wrote that we know i'm sure the kipus and some things and the textiles got information but we don't get the rosetta stone to read them <laughs> uh, and a lot was gone uh yeah uh, it's still uh, it's complicated because our sources are um oral tradition 500 years later the conquer conquer yeah we got uh, archaeoastronomy that you have to see the alignments uh, and check with that with your tools and things. Yeah, uh, that could be done every place. Every single temple have alignments to the stars. Um, the chronics of the Spaniards, but they have their own version of how things uh, go. And uh, well, basically these three. Yeah, and we have to build all of this information above this. Because the Incan astronomy was attached to religion, uh, it was the first knowledge to be erased in the extirpación de idolatrías by the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. So it's the less study field about the Incas, and we want a lot to to retrieve it and give it to the world. Yeah, I hope that. Good. I, yeah, that was right. questions. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I think we had another question in the audience here, or anyone else. Anyone online? We'll go back to the online. Oh, there's a lot of people. So we had a we had a lot of people attend today, which is uh, all you. <laughs> They're tired of hearing me speak, so I, I, <laughs> I certainly appreciate everything, uh, Anna Maria. And uh, muchísimas gracias. I'm thrilled. You're always, welcome, you're always welcome to come on come to one of our events uh, <laughs> if you're ever in our area. But uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Stefano. It was great, Reco. And uh, for thank the Novak you. folks, a couple of reminders. We have books in the back, so take a look. Take one home with you. Um, we also have a treat, right? We're going to go look at the telescope if you want to hang around. And uh, we've got outreach coming up. Sky Meadows next Saturday. Ud Barhazi the Saturday after that. And, um, you know, everyone that's going to AHSP, be safe and have a lot of fun out there. So. 
we'll see all you guys next next month. Thanks for thanks for coming.